morning everybody welcome to another default route video it really is morning in every sense over here it's about 20 past 1 and I'm pretty tired so we're just gonna go straight into this uh, OSPF configuration today we're gonna look at a basic topology we're gonna configure backbone uh, OSPF area we're gonna configure a little bit of stub area we're gonna configure an NSSA area and um, hopefully yeah, a couple of tweaks and tips along the way so let's get started yeah is everyone okay yeah is that is that you Arnold yes oh mate it's good to see you how are you I am good my friend very good so we're gonna get started uh, everyone just chill out and um, here we go so uh, here's the topology you can see we've got R2 and R3 separated by one uh, one connection here in area 0 so we're gonna configure this one first let's jump straight on to R2 um, here we go configuration mode uh, router OSPF is the command to start to configure OSPF we now need to choose the process ID so you can see there the process ID anything between 1 and 65 535 it's locally significant to the router only it's totally uh, personal choice what you go with on here I'd say if you were in the lab you just choose the easiest option I tend to go with one uh, I can't forget that one. Uh, some people like to choose a number relevant to the host name of the box that they're on. So they might have root or OSPF2 because I'm on R2 and root or OSPF3 when they're on R3 and so on. But whichever one's easiest for you, absolutely fine by me. I'm going to go with root or OSPF1. Um, first thing you do when I get in the, well, first thing I do when I go in the, into the OSPF process is to set the router ID. So the router ID, if you didn't physically uh, select it, would be um, the, 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 the loop back with the highest IP address it would just choose the IP address and that would become your OSPF router ID if you didn't have any loop back interfaces on your router it would choose the high, highest IP address of any of the interfaces on the router um, so it's, it's not totally random there's a pattern to it but if you don't hard code your router ID it will just pick one of those and you know you'll just have to live with that when it because when it's up when OSPF's done its um its configuration its designated router sort of um, conversation when that is done and it's loaded this doesn't change. The designated router IP is the same and the router ID of your router is the same. The only way you can clear that down is doing a clear IP OSPF process and um, on a live on a live router, that's a bit of pain for you that you probably don't want to have to go through. So all I can say is just hard code everything where you can um, just to make it a little bit easier. So the loopback interface on R2 is 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. I'm going to set the router ID to that. Now actually there's a little bit of pre-config I want to do on this. I want R2 to be the DR. I want R2 to be the designated router. So to do this I'm going to go into the um, the Ethernet interface connected to R3 and I'm going to set the OSPF priority. So the router with the highest OSPF priority is going to be the one that becomes the DR. So I'm going to make this a no-brainer and I'm going to set it to the highest IP OSPF priority that I can. This machine is going to be the DR. Uh, one other thing I could do is is turn off is, is make R3's interface never hold an election so if I go to in here and OSPF priority set that to zero root 3 will never ever become the DR ever but the default is one so um, anything more than one would would make me preferred anyway but there you go um, so let's go back to the root or OSPF process Oops, let's spell that right. So now we're going to configure the actual uh, interface to go into OSPF. So network is the keyword. Then we state the uh, network interface IP address. And I'm going to use a host mask of 0000 here. That means specifically enable OSPF on this IP address. Um, if I wanted to enable uh, every IP address in the class C uh, on the router, I could do that. That would be absolutely fine because I've only got one IP address in that network with that mask um, but let's say I had a slash uh, 25 bit mask and um, and I used that network statement and I had two interfaces one in each part of the 20 of the 24 uh, network with this one with the slash 25 mask I would enable OSPF on both of those interfaces so it's always good to make it specific so network 100.1.23.2 area 0 that's all it takes. So now that and it, that that router um, is enabled on that link between R2 and R3 for OSPF, but nothing's happening yet because we need to configure the other side. So let's hop over to R3, and we'll do the same configuration. So router OSPF one again. Process ID is totally specific locally, so it doesn't sorry uh, locally locally specific. So it doesn't matter whether you whether you choose a different or a set or the same priority uh, 
process ID doesn't matter. So we're at row SPF one. Um, we'll change. We'll we'll do the uh, yeah. We'll do the router ID. Uh, on this one, it's three dot three dot three dot three. Let's enable OSPF on this interface. Twenty three dot three on this side. Now again, we'll put it into area zero. And there we go. So you can see the neighbor two dot two dot two dot two. That was the router ID we configured on router two. If you remember that router ID. There we go. Um, and we can see we're up now. Tell you what we'll do. Let's just pop the loopback interfaces into here. So network 3.3.3.3, and we'll put that into area zero. So that's the loopback interface on R3, and uh, on R2, network 2.2.2.2, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, area zero. So both the uh, fast Ethernet interface connected between R2 and R3 is in the OSPF, and the loopback interface is on route two and route three are both, are both also in the OSPF. Let's just do a show IP. Uh, route there, and we'll see the loopback interface of route three. There we go. Um, we already know IP is up. I, uh, the OSPF is up, but we can just do a show IP OSPF neighbor just to pr just to show you guys that command. Now remember, um, we set route three to be a priority zero. Remember that? Uh, it's a druther because it will never ever 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 become a BDR or a DR on that link because it's set the priority to zero. If we look on R3, we'll see that R2 is um, is the DR, and we do because I've got I've set the highest priority of 255, uh, so I've got a full network, uh, full, full a full OSPF adjacency, and um, row two is the DR. So that's OSPF uh, configured on the backbone, and uh, let's move on to setting up the stub between R2 and R1.